We live in a fascinating time. A time where, strangely, a new space race is developing. A space race that will see us by far surpass the achievements of the last space race over half a century ago. In this new space race, one participant is still the same as in the first one. These guys here, you might have heard about them once or twice. But the other participant is now, you might have guessed it, not the Soviet Union anymore, but China. And both China and the US have signaled their intent of not only landing humans on the moon by the end of this decade, but to actually build moon bases. So thus to allow humans to live on the moon for extended periods of time. But how exactly will that look like? How will the US moon base differ from the Chinese one? What capabilities will both those moon bases have and when will they even be finished? So let's dig into the future moon base plans of the two largest economies on Earth. China has been very open about its lunar ambitions. For years, they have disclosed their plans for a manned moon landing by 2029 or 2030. In 2021 then, China announced that their space agency, CNSA, the China National Space Administration, would build a moon base near the lunar south pole in several steps, which they called the International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS in short. They signed a memorandum of understanding with Russia, who became the first partner of China for the ILRS. By this point in time, as of the recording of this video here, multiple other countries have joined China in that program. And if we visualize these countries on a map, it should come as no big surprise that there aren't any Western countries part of the ILRS initiative. Because this is, after all, a new space race. And a space race is by definition taking place between two adversaries. So the plan for ILRS looks as follows. In 2031, phase one begins with, quote, the establishment of the command center, basic energy and telecommunications facilities to satisfy the needs of lunar infrastructure, lunar autonomous operations and long-term research exploration, unquote. This is all still intended to be unmanned, by the way. No astronauts are of yet to land there, so the ILRS will initially be completely robotic and no Taikonauts, the Chinese version of astronauts, will land there. Not initially, at least. In 2032, ILRS Phase 2 begins with, quote, the establishment of lunar research and exploration facilities, such as lunar physics, geological profiling, lava tube exploration, and lunar sample return." Unquote. Hmm, this is very interesting, especially the lava tube exploration part. Still unmanned, all this will be carried out by remote-controlled or AI-controlled probes or rovers. Especially the exploration of lava tubes is super interesting, because they could become excellent spots for future bases, since they offer perfect protection from solar and space radiation and from micrometeorites. ILRS Phase 3 will follow in 2033, where in situ resource utilization technology verification facilities will be installed. Meaning, robotic harvesters that will prove that resources such as metals, rocket fuel, oxygen, or water can be extracted from moon dust or from ice, respectively, which can be found at the lunar south pole, where ILRS will be built. Then in 2034, in phase 4, biomedical research is expected to be carried out with a sample return mission. And then, in 2035, the final phase starts, phase 5, lunar-based astronomy and Earth observation capabilities are to be implemented. All the while, the ILRS will be unmanned, and only after 2035, the construction of an actual, real inhabited base is scheduled to start. The whole purpose of ILRS is actually to support future crewed lunar missions, so that when the Taikonauts land there at the ILRS, 
they already have a functioning support mechanism and resource extraction process in place. So the real inhabited base construction will only start by 2035 and is scheduled to take until 2045. And of that actual base, we don't have a lot of information to go by, apart from some basic facts and some really basic computer animations which look like a very generic moon base. Especially the guy here waving the Chinese flag is kind of funny, but even more hilarious is the space shuttle taking off in the background. Who knew that the Chinese would bring back the space shuttle? Joking aside, this looks as if not too much thought has gone into the development of the actual moon base after 2035, apart from the info that China also plans to build, in addition to an inhabited moon base, a space station in orbit around the moon, similar to NASA's Lunar Gateway, about which we'll talk in a second. There is also an interesting animation that has been released not long ago by the Chinese, showing the construction of a moon base inside a lava tube. So maybe the real base will actually then be inside lava tubes. Thus, the Chinese lunar architecture will involve a space station in moon orbit and the ILRS ground base, which will be inhabited after 2035. Okay, so then how about Uncle Sam? What is his moon base going to look like? Well, in the case of the US of A, NASA, the International Aeronautics and Space Administration, is the agency tasked with the establishment of the first permanent human settlement on the Moon. The plan is as follows. In late 2025, a SpaceX Falcon Heavy will launch the first two modules of the Lunar Gateway Station into a lunar orbit. This will serve as an orbital outpost to which astronauts would dock when approaching the Moon or when leaving the Moon. Some sort of intermediary station between the Earth and the lunar surface, if you will. Then, when the lunar surface missions begin with Artemis 3, which in my opinion will not happen by 2026, but more likely by 2028 or even 2029, there will be regular dockings with the Gateway and the Gateway will be expanded with subsequent later Artemis missions. Meanwhile, manned landings will take place simultaneously. Now the only thing we currently know about the NASA moon base is that it will be called Artemis Base Camp and it will begin construction no earlier than 2029 or 2030. It will be comprised of a foundational surface habitat to be built by Thales Alenia Space and of a pressurized moon rover called the Habitable Mobility Platform, which will be built by JAXA, the Japanese space agency. Talking of other space agencies, you can see on this map here the signatory countries that will partake in the joint missions to the moon under leadership of the US. As you can see, the countries that are part of the Artemis Accords are quite Western-centric. Welcome back, good old two-block world order. So the Artemis Base Camp, which interestingly enough will also be built at the lunar south pole, will allow to house four astronauts for up to two months at a time. So far so good. That is the official NASA plan. And here's to what I think. I personally think that this will never happen as it is being currently intended. Because contrary to the Chinese who will land their people with relatively small moon landers on the moon, NASA has the SpaceX human landing system, which is in essence a modified Starship. The interior pressurized volume of Starship will be at least 1000 cubic meters. That is more than 10 times the interior pressurized volume than the comparatively very small Artemis base camp. So one Starship in itself will already be a much larger moon base than the Artemis base camp. Which is quite hilarious if you ask me. What better way then to construct a moon base than to use the Starships themselves? SpaceX would just land one or two empty lunar Starships and one cargo Starship before the astronauts would arrive in another HLS Starship. 
the cargo starship would carry at least one pressurized rover and a crane. The crane would be used to tilt the one or two previously landed starships to the side. Then the starships would be covered by lunar dust called regolith for protection against cosmic and solar radiation and against micrometeorites. And then you modify the interior a bit and the huge fuel tanks of Starship could serve as additional living or cargo space. And voila, you would have an impressively large moon base, much larger than China's ILRS and much larger than the Artemis base camp, offering vast interior space for dozens of astronauts simultaneously, an idea which has been circling around for years now. I think that is how the first moon base is going to be built. Everything else seems absolutely nonsensical in comparison if you have a behemoth such as Starship at your command. All this will of course happen in the early 2030s, while China will still be busy building their unmanned ILRS research station. So I personally think that thanks to SpaceX's huge Starship lander, NASA will have a far larger and more capable moon base before the Chinese will start even building their real crude moon base after 2035. At least I sincerely hope so. Because the Artemis base camp, in my opinion, doesn't make any sense. NASA must make use of Starship and will hopefully abandon their Artemis base camp idea. Because, you know, that idea might have been cool in 1971. But in 2030, I am sorry to say, it will seem a little out of place compared to the Starship moon base idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe since we'll continue putting out lots of videos on these fascinating technological developments. All the best and see you next time.